Uh, we're located in uh, as far north as you can get in Winnership County, and uh, we have uh, we actually own three parcels of land in Minnesota. Most of our land is in Iowa. As far as cover crops are concerned, that uh, you know, if we can make things work up there as far north as we are, if you're anywhere south of us, uh, it's only going to be easier for you. Um, as we expanded, uh, I think we had a pretty good handle on what we, what we needed for feed needs for our milking animals. But uh, probably the biggest surprise for us was our, our heifers, our replacement heifers. And the first uh, three years after our, our first expansion, uh, we you know, were constantly buying hay. Um, and so we started thinking about, geez, how can we get more, more of this heifer feed around? We're just always short of it. About the same time, we bought a farm up in uh, Minnesota. And uh, the first year that we bought that farm, we put all the corn, and uh, we ended up chopping that, uh, that field, or the entire farm, actually. About that time, we, we decided to start seeding something after we chopped in the fall. And we tried a couple of years using triticale. Um, after a couple of years, we had our supplier had trouble getting that seed. So he switched to ryegrass, cereal rye. Since then, that has been uh, uh, kind of our crop plan. Uh, it does two things. Of course, it, uh, it, it does the cover crop for the bare ground. And uh, it, we end up with uh, some really good uh, palatable uh, heifer feed the next spring. So the pictures on the, on the bottom right is just a, a picture of us or of that same field the way it looks after we're done chopping. And of course, uh, just bare ground and uh, really needs to be, to be covered. What we typically do is chop, then we put a, an application of manure, then we uh, come in and seed the cereal rye and uh, let that go till the next spring. And typically we harvest that uh, rileage uh, between the middle and the end of May. And then we put another application of manure on and then we seed oats and alfalfa into those acres. And uh, so that's the way we establish our, our new stands of alfalfa. And it's, uh, it's worked uh, extremely well in our operation. Uh, the timing is right for just about everything there. Here's some uh, pictures of, uh, of this uh, rileage. The upper left-hand bunker is uh, a shot of our bunker that holds rileage. And, um, and then the bottom right-hand picture is of, uh, we actually harvested some oats and radishes this fall and made just excellent feed. It's a very high quality feed and has made a, a good uh, mixture for our TMR mix for our heifers. Um, Probably one of the challenges with, uh, with this whole crop rotation that we have is uh, timing is very important. Uh, as far north as we are, as soon as that chopper is done chopping the field, you should have the drill in the field going. We only need about 250 acres of rye for our heifer feed. The balance of, of the acres that we chop, we have to come up with some kind of a plan to, uh, uh, you know, to get a cover on there. And I think our goal now is to just no-till all that in right after we're done chopping. And uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly if we're gonna, cereal rye has been our main cover crop, of course, that we've used, but uh, uh, radishes, if we get the chopping done early enough in the fall, we're gonna use. We've also tried some uh, annual ryegrass, which has worked quite well for us. Uh, some of you that are uh, no-till farmers might cringe at the looks of a truck on a, on a field. Uh, they're wonderful uh, pieces of equipment to move material. They're, they're the most efficient one you can get, but uh, they do have some compaction issues. So the other reason we like uh, these cover crops is that it does take care of some of our compaction issues. Uh, here's some of the other equipment that we've had to invest in. Uh, that's a, a picture of the chopper that we have. Um, the uh, two latest uh, purchases that we made this past year was the European style mower on the bottom left hand uh, picture and then the merger on the, the bottom right hand. And for those of you that aren't uh, familiar with that, this, this uh, European style mower, there's, a, there's three sections to that mower and there is one in front. There's a picture of the tractor going, uh, you're standing behind it. but. Um, 
you can mow 300 acres of hay with that in a day very easily. And, um, and then this merger will merge seven of these windrows into one. In two passes, you'll have seven into one. So uh, with those two pieces of equipment, we have been able to just shorten up our chopping season dramatically, allowing us more time to uh, get our corn planted in the spring and then alfalfa harvest and this rileage all comes at the same time. On an average year, this, this uh, has worked out quite well for us. Um, we've actually been able to turn this in a cover crop into uh, an income generator, uh, other than, of course, the, the obvious reasons why you'd want to plant cover crops. Um, just running through the cost of putting this in, uh, the seed for our cover crop is about $30 an acre, tillage 12, drilling 15, and then we do roll our, all of our fields after we've done these passes to make it smooth for uh, cutting that crop the next year. And we figure we have about $45 an acre in uh, mowing, merging, chopping, and hauling that, that uh, crop. So our total cost is $110 an acre. Uh, right now we're paying $175 a ton for heifer hay. Uh, that includes the grinding we have to do. We're actually paying about $150 to $155 per ton, but then we have to figure in grinding it because it goes through a TMR mixer. Our cereal rye, we're getting a, about five ton to the acre uh, as fed of that cereal rye uh, per acre. And if you back that, that down into its feed value, that's about $72 per ton as fed. So we've got a $360 value of feed uh, after it's been chopped. Um, we've got the cost of $110, so we end up with a $250 net return on, uh, on this particular crop. Now, I know that's not gonna work for everyone, but anyone that has livestock and needs some forage, uh, this, this uh, crop works extremely well for us. Uh, some of the benefits that we've seen, uh, of course, erosion control, that was number one on our, on our list. Um, salvaging our, our manure nutrients um, and of course, I just showed you the feed value that, uh, that we've seen here. Uh, some of the intangibles, and I think uh, all of us are probably a little bit in this, uh, in this area, even though we didn't start out with using cover crops for these, I know it's doing uh, all these things for us now. I think there's improved soil health, uh, weed control. It did, it did make a shift after we started using cover crops. Uh, and of course, we've got a more diverse crop rotation. We've been able to fit one more crop in uh, from what we normally have. Uh, definitely better water infiltration. Uh, the reduced compaction, and I'll show you some pictures now of, of some uh, annual ryegrass that we've uh, seeded, and you'll, you'll see what we've found. And of course, we've got this machinery. We didn't buy this, uh, upgrade this machinery just for the ryegrass. We had to do it for actually for our alfalfa, so we already have that, but we're able to spread it out over more acres, making it an easier way for us to improve that, that equipment and get a more efficient way to put it up and get it done in, in a timely manner. Uh, here's just a picture of, uh, that is annual ryegrass on the right. Uh, this is right after we've chopped in the fall, and um, of course, Obviously, just that bare ground out there, that's something we just don't want to see. A year ago at uh, the Three State uh, Cover Crop Conference down in Altoona, I bumped into the gentleman that uh, uh, talked me into planting some of this annual rye grass. And uh, actually, he asked me how I felt it was doing. And I said, oh, it just doesn't look like it's taken off the way it should. Uh, and the very next day, he, he came, well, he asked me, he said, did you get a spade out and look, you know, what's it doing underneath in the, you know, below the surface? And I said, no, I hadn't had time to do that. So the very next day, he came up and we grabbed a, a spade and went out and started uh, doing some digging. And what we found was, uh, well, here's a picture up close of, of this uh, annual ryegrass. Compared to cereal ryegrass, it, or cereal rye, <laughs> You know, cereal rye right across the road planted at the same time is probably twice that height. And uh, uh, so anyway, that was my disappointment that it didn't look good from the road, you know, from the pickup window. 
We started digging and uh, found that uh, we had a, a tremendous root mass underneath that uh, went much further than, than we had, had planned. That was kind of a, an aha moment for me that uh, this small little plant up, up on top uh, could have roots that would go that deep. And uh, so uh, I'm a firm believer in, uh, in this crop in particular on probably some of our, our um, acres that we're not gonna harvest the next spring. And of course, here's just a close-up picture of the root mass that we found when we were digging. And uh, the roots at the bottom of the hole, of course. Thank you.